Welcome to Date Night Podcast, a tabletop role playing game podcast set in the homebrew world of Volunaya. Let's explore a whole new world together. Morning comes. You guys have had a long rest. If that you need it for anything, I think Mike used a spell. Nope. Anything? Uh, what's on the agenda for day two? I'm going to go to the market and look at some boomsticks. Okay. I'll well, follow him around. First that. thing in the market, you, you go through the um, kind of traveler's market area. Uh, lots of people selling breakfast foods uh, at oh, this time of the day. Uh, things that you can eat on the go, like fantasy breakfast burritos. Oh, and, I love uh, fantasy breakfast burritos. Yeah. Uh, from all different places, you know, who, merchants who are here. So you guys have a nice breakfast on the move as you're walking and uh, perusing the different shops. Uh, make an investigation check, Darren, if you're looking for the arms dealer. Uh, 18. Yeah. Uh, not too long after you've started to fill your belly, you come across a dealer who's just got a couple of guns on a on a table. He maybe has eight of them. And it, that's all he's got in this big booth. He's got kind of two uh, tables beside eight. him that look like they just stay there. And he's kind of rented that spot out, but he doesn't need that much. Just got a couple of guns uh, on the table, a couple of jars of uh, powder, and some bags of what look like uh, like musket balls. Looks like he's got flintlock type pistols. Is there any way I could tell to see approximately like how much damage one of these would do? Having seen uh, them in limited use. I don't think you would have seen them do too much. The one time you really would have seen it fire, I think, would have been where Cayman cracked it into the door. But haven't, I've seen, like, firearms before, like back on Lamoche. Yeah, but was anybody even... Did anybody use them? I think you saw them, like, on the hips of the Gif and Albagula and stuff, but I don't oh, know if okay. you've seen them fired have you well yeah maybe in the bandit fight did somebody have a musket? yeah that's where i'm thinking of yeah you saw the long gun um and it seemed like uh, a slow weapon mm-hmm. but one that was equivalent to like a slow loading large heavy crossbow type of uh damage that it would do to things it, it seemed to tear things open pretty good Okay. Uh, so they just have like just like flintlock pistols. He's got a, uh, like six pistols and two long guns on the table. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay, I don't have any money, so I'm just oh, sitting there okay. like thinking of like, like if I wanted to, to to do like trade, but I don't want to. I'm not willing to give up anything for a flintlock. Okay. So you see him, kind of look him over. He doesn't pay you much attention as plenty of people stop and just kind of glance at the wares before they move on. Doesn't look like he sells a whole lot. How much for the small one? Sorry? How much for the smaller one? Oh, the the pistols. Yes. Um, well, the pistols run a, about 400 gold pieces. 400. And the, 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 the big one? Hmm. Uh, this one around twelve hundred, and the other fifteen. Oof. Take it round. <laughs> <laughs> Dern pulls out. I'm just for curiosity's sake. Dern pulls out the the lightning wand. Mm-hmm. And since it's a magical item, he holds it up and he's like, "This here not is not pointing it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, not directly <laughs> at them. No, this here is a, a a lightning wand. It's a very magical, powerful item." What if I give you this in exchange for a pistol and the long one? Um, might I have a look at the wand? Aye. Okay. Gingerly hands it over. Pulls out um, his hammer. He <laughs> looks at it, investigates it a little bit. Hmm. Well, I mean, it, it is what you say it is. It, it's a lightning wand. Uh, it's not the most powerful arcane it's a boomstick for a boomstick item it is but i'm also in the business of making money i i i could take this as a 
partial trade, but it it wouldn't purchase a flintlock. <sighs> he just takes it back and turns away, disgusted, very disappointed. Okay. He sees you walk away with the blunderbuss uh, on your other hip. Aye. And he says, that, on the other hand. Yes. I mean, I. <laughs> that blunderbuss is a little bit of a different story. This is a crinkle fire touch blunderbuss. I, I know that. I saw it on your belt while you were examining my weapons. I I could trade you for that. What would you give me for this? Any gun on the table. How about any two guns on the table? Two short guns. How about the short gun and the 1,200 gold piece long gun? Make a persuasion check. That's a... Where's my persuasion? Why do I never remember any... That's an eight... Okay. The gnome is going to be so pissed. (laughs) I thought you said the gnome was an asshole. The gnome is an asshole, but he's still going to be pissed. (laughs) I could make that trade. Uh, At eight, it hasn't exactly been dependable. I'm looking for something dependable. Hmm. Well, these are where it's at. Shot, too, and some powder. Oh, now we're talking a a little bit more. Oh, it's not that much more. What about the the nice long gun and uh, some shot and powder? If you're looking for something dependable, the longer gun is, or this gun is the more dependable of the long guns. That's the difference in price. Eddie, you drive a hard bargain, but I'll, I'll go for that. All right. He makes the trade, gives you uh, the long gun, gives you a bag of uh, shot for it, which is 50, um, and enough powder to take those basically 50 shots in a jar. Uh, Gives you a a plunger for it. Um. It's attached, actually, under the barrel. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Okay. What's the, st- the, the stats? Stats? Yeah. All uh, right. Um, trying to go for shotgun paladin. <laughs> shotgun paladin. Uh, it takes a turn to load. Unless it's already loaded. Mm-hmm. It misfires if your dice roll is a five or less. Is it, is it what or less? Five or less. Fifteen. And it takes you a short rest to uh, clean it if, it if it jams. It crits on a 19 or 20. Yeah, it doesn't crit on a 20. Just a 19. And it does... Well, the 20 it crits, but it explodes. <laughs> Range is 100 feet slash 400 feet is the long range. Is this just in the PHP? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Uh, it does a 2d6 piercing damage. Okay. That's pretty much all you need, I think. Okay. Yeah, you are not uh, proficient in it. Okay. I don't think, because it would be a special, okay, like a so special it's weapon. Like a, it's not like a martial, martial weapon. weapon? Probably not. Okay. And it uses dex because it's a ranged weapon, so. Okay. Okie doke. Anything else in the market? What What you doing, Trixie? I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here right now, so... I would assume that I would be flying around, skirting around, looking for them and or any easy marks. All right. I swear there's an owl that keeps flying around. Just you imagine things, sir. I mean, believe that that's a seven, uh, no, 13. All right. 
Um, you don't find them right away mm-hmm. uh, in the morning, but after a little while of swooping around, you see some gleam uh, off some armor <laughs> and catch sight of them leaving the market. Okay. My eyes. <laughs> I'll swoop down nearby and just land. Okay. Look around. Just to add to them walking somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. So what to now? So I guess we have to figure out where this auction is going to be. <laughs> that wasn't an auction check. That was just me dropping. <laughs> that down. wasn't an auction. <laughs> I'd rule an auction check. You would know. Um, having been to the town before. Okay. Yeah, you probably, you've brought your ore uh, okay. to sell. So the auction is clifftop. You actually passed it on your way to the, on the way to the hotel. It was that big auction house. And do I know when the auction is going to happen? Uh, came and said it was in a, f- uh, it's not the next day, not the feast day. It's the day after. Okay. So we had the feast day and the day of auction. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how are you planning to stop this auction? Well, it's a multi-pronged approach. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm listening. So the first prong didn't go very well, right? Aye. So I'm thinking we should skip to the last prong, which is the, this this Lucius guy. Aye. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you know that, that the last prong is actually the prong that connects all the prongs and it actually puts everything together like a fork. You know, like a fork. You just got the fork. I don't think you know how prongs work. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm the smith between the two of us, but it's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a <The> minute. Irony. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm assuming if we go to him and we can. If, we can persuade him. You know, the dwarven persuasion. Those are some heavy quotations there. <laughs> the, the, the dwarven persuasion to, uh, you know, cancel the auction. We, may, we may be able to cut it off at the pass. I don't think like you know. Pass. Okay, sure. That role was me looking for someone I could possibly pickpocket. Was Back off, Missy. Uh-huh. Not necessarily them. Yeah, so you don't really hear what they're saying with that other check you had a minute ago. I got distracted by this person. But this, uh, <laughs> somebody walked by with something uh, shiny tucked into the back of their belt. Looks like they had just left the market. I don't think they could tuck you into the back of the belt. <laughs> I'm shiny. <laughs> that stealth check is a 10. No, sleight of hand. Sleight of hand is... A 10. Okay. <laughs> a stealth hack is a chin. All right. So you reach in, grab a hold of the thing. This time, person spins around, grabs your arm, and you see underneath the hooded cloak the halfling from the tavern that you entered before just a little bit. And she says, why don't you come have a talk with me, little one? I'm not doing anything else right now. All right, then. Um, She starts walking with a tight grip around your arm unless you try to escape the grapple. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. 15. Do a grapple check. Is that just a flat roll? Uh, You can add acrobatics or athletics. 18. Yeah, that beats 15, so you slip out. Mm-hmm. Away from her grasp. Are you still walking with her? No, I'll fly away. Okay. She's going to try to grab you as you fly away as her opportunity, opportunity attack. attack. So okay. we're just going to do a new grapple check. Uh, nine. Fine. <laughs> Gra- <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> you slip out. Fine. You go to fly. Grabs you again. No, no, dearie. You're going to come with me. Your hands are quick, but they're not that quick. I don't have hands. <laughs> or I could just let the guards know that you're here yeah, if you try and make one of those dashes away again now. Well, again, no, I wouldn't try to do it again. <laughs> right. Try it again. She <laughs> takes you <laughs> immediately. Ta- takes you back to the inn, kind of motions for you to go ahead of her inside. Mm-hmm. All right, you go in? Yeah. All right, where, where are you two headed while that's happening? Because that's a little bit of a walk from the market to the district there so what are your master plans for this last giant prong 
Okay, so it's a multi-pronged approach. We've got that. Okay. So we just need to figure out where this Lucius fella is. At eight. What you say, we go back to the tavern and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I might be metagaming a wee bit. <laughs> Oh, I always, I always love the taverns. Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. So you guys start <laughs> headed back to the uh, what was that called? The goddamn house. Something so rose. Rose's thorn. Yeah. The rose. Rose. rose Sage's rose. rose. Yeah. Rosebud. So, yeah, Sage's you're rosebud. walking that way. Just rosebud. So you get thrown inside the inn. Um, she comes in behind you. She says, "Okay, now." I don't mind you stealing. I only <laughs> mind you <laughs> ale. <laughs> stealing from me. And the door poof, opens because it's hard far. far. What's she going on here? I'm just sitting there kicking my feet. Rolling, the two of you roll an insight check. This went well last time. I am completely uninterested in what's going on here. You're, waiting, you're so ready for that drink. <clears throat> 24. 24, okay. You catch on real quickly as you walk in here that there's a lot of tension between the two of these. Actually, technically an 11. But. And maybe um, the way the hobbit or the halfling looks at you when you come Stop in. Stop talking to Zay reading Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the way the halfling looks at you when you come in and quickly like um, pulls her sleeves down over her arms like gives you a weird feeling about her. What's going on in here? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> My inquisitive voice. Oh, yours or words? Words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's a dwarf thing. Ah, but nothing. She was just supposed to be helping me clean up earlier this morning, and she didn't make it here on time. I'm sorry. That I'm new to like town. Bullshit. I got lost. <laughs> to you, it definitely sounds like it's wrong. Oh, uh, what can I get you boys today? You liked what you had last time, did you? Uh, ale and answers. Well, we've got the ale and we've got eggs. No, no. Answers. Uh, intimidation, I guess. Nope. <laughs> Even if you're proficient, Five. that's an eight. <laughs> no, we don't serve answers here. You can take your ale, you can take your eggs, so you can get the fuck out. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'll take the ale and the now eggs. Now start cleaning up, little bird. And we'll Ooh. talk about it later. At this well, point, where's do my I rag? need the inside check to realize something's up? No, you think she's really okay. pissed at her servant. You can't find good help these days. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take an ale. All right. I told you I got lost. Hmm? Start cleaning. Uh, two silver pieces a piece. Clink. All right. Yesterday it was one. Well, that was for just ale. Oh, oh I'm getting eggs too. Okay. No, yeah. the, no, just day Charge me four. You need eggs, man. I had eight. for dinner. He paid four for dinner also. Okay. Yes, I did. All right. Um, well, I, I just got in. I'll have to whip them up for you, all right? Uh, give me a few minutes. Do you whip eggs? And she leaves uh, into the back. <laughs> the, leaves the three of you in the tavern. So... You mind letting us in on what that was all about? I don't work for her. Oh, we know that. Can I just oh, leave now? Yeah, yeah, we know that. <laughs> Turns like, what the fuck? I'm losing my mic stand here. He's sitting in a chair. Technological malfunctions. I can't turn it because it's taped. Why is it taped? Fantasy mic stand. <laughs> We'll be back after this brief intermission. This special episode of Date Night brought to you by <laughs> Ale and Eggs. Ew. <laughs> but no answers. <laughs> but no answers. You know, we had juice, too. <laughs> I don't think he was ewing about the ale, honey. <laughs> also brought to you by Potpourri Blunderbuss. <laughs> no. When you need a room to smell fresh quickly, I'll always remember Potpourri Blunderbuss. I like how Mike's had the Blunderbuss <laughs> for like, I don't know. Eight months. Oh, God. However many episodes it is be before we get to Abagula, we can't sure. know. And then it fires flowers. He's like, ah, oh, the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> because even when I used it in the past, it was either like, okay, this did some damage, or whoop, I shot Kip. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy in particular. I rolled a bad perception check, so you guys could talk. 
Okay. <laughs> I oh, don't we, work for her. We know that. I we we know that. What you didn't know that? Shut up. <laughs> so you, you mind telling me what's going on? I was just trying to slip a little bit from her pocket, and she caught me. You know that's oh. against the law, right? <laughs> oh, no, oh don't go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am the law. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> Not even supposed to be here. Who well, were you supposed? But you to were be? here yesterday, weren't you? Just trying to look around for a bit. That seems suspicious, but I don't have a DM here to roll an insight check. I know. <laughs> Maybe we should wait. I probably should. <laughs> I won't tell. This second pause brought to you by... <laughs> well, we can... This, this second pause brought to you by bad perception. Bad perception, <laughs> checks. Uh, I'm really supposed to just be passing through, but I'm kind of stuck here for a little bit. Buddy, well, why can't you just keep going? Go ahead, I can cut it. What's got you stuck? Except for when he talks. What's got you stuck? <laughs> Well, I was just trying to figure out what something I had was, but apparently it's something that I wasn't supposed to have, and now I have to stay here and try and make sure I can keep it. These are some awfully vague answers. Well, what are you doing here? I'm passing through on my way back. What are well, you doing? Well, and eggs, Pro- okay? <laughs> probably Kufo. I'm actually supposed to be following him, but I don't know what... Holy oh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be following him. Wait, him or me? I gestured to you. Oh, me. Holy shit. <laughs> she was talking about the dwarf. <laughs> God damn it. Here's your eggs. You so, know, honey, I don't even care anymore. And she goes back into the kitchen. And that's how you get out of that. <laughs> Wait. You didn't know you could have that? You'd be surprised how often annoyance beak. works. <laughs> And she goes back into the kitchen. (laughs) So why are you supposed to be following me? It's really hard to sneak after him while I'm actively here sitting in the room. I know. It's weird. It's a weird dynamic. So that's why I said, I just fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, boss, I don't really know what his name is. He looks a little strange. But he wants me to follow you and see what you're doing here in town and tell him. Can you describe this man? Well, he has a kabuki mask some of the time. Okay, that wouldn't ring a bell for you. But I this am. morning he had, he wasn't wearing it and he looked kind of like a tiefling with no horns. That tiefling, <laughs> no horns. I believe we found our man. Kielmer del Toro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like a cool movie though. It does sound like a good movie. Horns. But you it's know, they'd probably red, change though. the actors for the third one. It'd probably suck. <laughs> They just redo the script. It's just screaming reboot. It's not (laughs) worth the time. (laughs) They just take the exact script of Hellboy and make it again. I'm sad now. Okay, let's keep playing games. (laughs) Okay, I think we found our man. He's a man? He's a tiefling. Uh, You know what I meant. Darkling. Okay. I think we found our darkling. Aye, there you go. Okay. Can we be racist? So, who's this Darkling everyone's talking about? So, I believe the Darkling that she's referring to is the same one we're referring to, which happens to be Lucius. Who the fuck are we? Oh. <laughs> oh, his name is Lucius. If you shut up for a half a second, I would have explained it to you. Half the time, you sound Spanish. <laughs> well, you know, he's that's the most racist. He's the most interesting dwarf in the world. <laughs> hey, look, I haven't been dwarf. I haven't been home in a long time. I haven't been I've a dwarf been before. before. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> well, I was only a dwarf today. I don't even... <laughs> Ooh, there go those rails. Okay. <laughs> what are rails? <laughs> you know, the things that are on the side of the banisters, you know, the, the stairway, the rails. I have a thunder horn. <laughs> This is why we can never make progress. I know. I mean, and <laughs> is it time to go eat dinner? What time is it? <laughs> it's only 4.30. Oh, okay. No, it's not. I am hungry, okay. though. Sorry, so it started are, a lot so earlier than since, usual. Uh, <laughs> since you've been here looking at me. 
Kermit the Dwarf. <laughs> we are going to do a show for you now. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one having it's issues. Not easy, <laughs> it's all of us. Or short. <laughs> <laughs> so, since you've been following me, <laughs> now, I've got the side. now that you're fucked, <laughs> now there's no one recovering voice. from that's this. Right, that's his new voice. <laughs> Man, Sam's going to be pissed that I got rid of the blunder bus. <laughs> we can okay. tell him where it is. <laughs> He won't know for a long I know, time. I know. <laughs> How do you good li- yet, lad? Oh, hi, I'm good. I, there we go. All right. Had a frog <laughs> in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Ribbit. <laughs> so, Lucius, the tiefling with no horns. Go. Cool. <laughs> so since you've been following me, I'm uh, I'm coming to wondering why is Lucius having me followed? I don't really much know myself. Well, why don't we go ask him? What kind of things is he asking you to report? Just what he's doing in town, right? And what he plans to do, and that's all I know. Anything specific he's looking for? No, just what he's doing in town. I don't know. Well, what are you doing? Until you're trying to, to, to stop the auction, fix his deal. Oh uh, yeah, I want to keep the mine. Yeah. Uh, good. You know where Lucius is, don't you? Of a sort. Every time I knock on the door, I just poof. Oh, there's your your big prong. That, it's a multi pronged <laughs> approach. No, okay? but this was the next prong you were working on. <laughs> no, right? it was the big. It was the it was the main prong. Okay. Do you want to know where he is or not? Yes. All right. Now here you go. All right. All right. Lass. <laughs> Tiny owling creature lady person. Um, <laughs> Who's a bit racist? Where's, where's your boss? Do I really have to show you? Because if I show you, then he's going to tell them where my thing is. And I don't want to tell you guys about it because then you'll know and then you'll have me follow someone else. That was rather confusing. Let me ask you another question. Is this thing that you're worrying about, is it more painful than broken bird bones? Because I hear they break fairly easily. They're very hollow. Aye. Yes, it would hurt a lot. Um, if they try and come and get it from me, it will hurt. Well, how about this? If they come after you and you're with us, you got two dwarves to help you out. Aye. If not... I got a hammer. <laughs> hey, how do I? But you've no shield. I have a shield. I don't need a shield to break your legs. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 I love how Dern's just gone completely off the rails now. Crush the flame of hope. <laughs> I go up to the door. Do you see that house up there? That's where it is. The one with the misty windows. Do I see misty windows? Yeah, this is the, that's the big mansion that you've passed a couple of times in uh, Hillside that looks out of place because everything else there looks temporary. This thing looks like a big, like stone, almost castle, but just huge mansion that's set up there in a place that doesn't look like it, it should be there at all. What do you think? Ta-da! It sounds oh. crongy. <laughs> this is not froggy. Ribbit. <clears throat> so you headed there? We're heading there. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, you do. You walk that way again another 15 minutes or so back to uh, Hillside. Get there. Big, uh, like I described to her a little while ago with the wrought iron fence. There's a gate. Then there's a garden and then the the house. Um, You do see what she's talking about with the misty windows. When you're outside the gate, you look at the windows, and all that's behind them is a mist. Somebody's having fun in there. (laughs) Do you want to knock? 
Sure, I'll go first. All right. All right, you go to the gate. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Open up the gate. Step into the courtyard. Um, and walk. She walk. Well, are you going to or? Oh, no, she's coming too. What are you rolling? Yeah. Okay. All right. You walk there. In the courtyard, you're going up to the door. Mm-hmm. You go to the door, knock. Nothing happens. Knock louder. Okay. Should have made no some response. pamphlets last night just in case. Knock we harder. Home. I knock. You're immediately teleported inside the mansion. I knock. Nothing happens. That bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Can we open the door? Pull on the door. Doesn't seem to move at all. It doesn't even jiggle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While he's doing that, Another inside the lobby, you're greeted by the spectral servant. Hello and welcome back. They followed me. All right. If they don't have an invitation, they won't be following you any further. Okay, good. One I've, of the perks of this place. I've written, I have an invitation. <laughs> I, I've, written, <laughs> I've written the words, the good news on the side of my <laughs> <laughs> And you're just... Boom. 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 It doesn't even rattle like when you smash it. You can The two of you can roll an arcada check if you want. 20, not that. 20. That's the six. Dern, perfectly normal house. Warden, <laughs> this is... Uh, wait, wait, I've seen this before. I scratched the door. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, Damn, I really thought that would work. Warden, this is a, a portable mansion, um, and it's actually just the, the door, um, and the facade of this is like kind of here, but the inside is actually in another dimension somewhere. Uh, the inside's another dimension. With a 20, I guess you know, oh. like, it's something that you can cast. Um, it's a very high-level magic. It stays there for, like, a week when you cast it. Um, and when it's gone, all the things that were inside it that, you know, were originally inside it vanish, too. You can't take anything that was originally inside of it out. But if you bring stuff in, you, um, when it vanishes, everything that you brought in and all the people just appear where it was, basically, on well, the ground said. level. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, up. I stop. I put good news away. All right. So I guess there's not really getting inside. I mean, you're the one that seems to know about this, so. No. So I guess it's really not a way to no. get inside. <laughs> You said he only lasts for seven days, right? He's got to come out before then, doesn't he? Yes, but the auction is in two. Well, we don't know how long this has been. Hey, you, how long has this mansion been here? I just shout at the <laughs> fucking street. You're inside the gate right now? Oh, I'm just shouting to the um, void. <laughs> and to the you void. basically can't see anything on the other side of the gate while you're in the garden. All right, let's go find somebody. See it like While you're in the garden area, though, you look up. And you can see the windows aren't misty, but you don't see anything behind them. Barely they're done. Can I find a rock? Sure. I want to huck the rock at the non-misty <laughs> window. All right, make an athletics check. Okay. Oh, fuck. That's a, that's a seven. And just back down. I'll try. <laughs> I'm proficient. Sorry, that's a ten. Okay. That's a good athletics. roll. Athletics. Yeah. Ting. Off the window. Damn it. I thought, you know, it's not misty anymore. It's worth a shot. <clears throat> well, you, let's go. You can always shoot it. I don't want to waste one of my bullets on a fucking window. Okay. The two of you turn back around and leave. Yeah. All right. What are you doing? What does ghosty guy say after I say? All of a sudden she hears ting. He, he doesn't seem worried about it. He says... Um, no one will harm you if you were being followed. This uh, is one of the perks of our abode here. 
Will you need any help getting anything to your room? No, you I'm look just a... rather unencumbered. Is there anything I can do to help you? I'm a little bit worried about what boss is going to say when he finds out that they followed me here. <coughs> and the ghosty right, guy dies. The spectral <laughs> servant develops <laughs> asthma immediately. <laughs> Got a chest cold. Sorry, I was a smoker in life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't smoke, children. Um, well, uh, if he was at the window, he may have saw them if they came through the gate, but... Maybe not. I'll hide out here for a while. Okay. Hey, I'm Sam, and you're listening to Date Night Podcast. If you're interested in homebrew items, class race options, and other unique things about the show, you can get more information about a lot of them from our friendly neighborhood Game Moms Dungeon Master Guild titles. Some of them are offered for free, and if you like things that are free... Go on and get those, and some of them are paid. And if you like to support our show, those are only just a few dollars, and you can help support us. You can find all of those titles by going to datenightpodcast.com and clicking the store tab, or search for Will Mayer on dmsguild.com. There are titles like Path of Fury for the Barbarian, my personal favorite, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Rules for Building Your Own Homunculus, Bloodlines for... New Races, Backgrounds, Feats, and Crinkle Fire Touches, Guide to Homebrew Magic Items, made for your campaign. Now, let's get back to the story and see what dumb thing we're going to do next. So, I'm I'm, head back out. I'm looking for like a guard or something that would yeah, know the city. When you get back outside, it's bustling in that area. You couldn't hear any of that while you were in the garden. Um, all the sound of the market kind of went away. But when you get back out, you're back in uh, the near the harbor market. Guards walking back and forth. You grab one of them, stop them. Hey, how long has this mansion been here? Oh, and I think nigh about. Oh, I believe uh, three days or so. Fuck. Yeah, cannot wait. All right, thank you. <clears throat> All right. So. We cannot just wait outside. No, I know. I know. My multi-pronged approach seems to be... Pronging. <laughs> Not exactly efficient. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here to help you, brother, but I'm kind of out of ideas. I wish we could have grabbed the whole lot owling. I could have knocked with her hands if they were holding on to her. Maybe we would have been poofed in as well. Well, why didn't you try that? I, I didn't know not to try that. You seen me knocking. I saw you knocking, but... Then we saw her knocking, and then it was... And she right. did tell you guys that when she knocks on the door, she goes, poof. <laughs> Today, yeah, you should have known what that means. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> Especially how insightful. Maybe we wait. <laughs> Maybe we wait for the owl to come back out. Well, she was tasked to follow us, so it's just keep going. Walk right. around. Is there a temple in these parts? Are you going to burn that one down too? I'm thinking about no, it. No, it's just day drinking. <laughs> day drinking in the temple. <laughs> Where's that communion wine? It's um, not yummy. Tap the barrel. I don't, and not in this town. I don't think there's a bunch of heathens. Bunch okay, of the temple. You do hear. Wait, what day? No, the bells is the next day. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Good. We haven't got there. No, it is the next day. Because they went up to the place, and she said the next day, or it's tomorrow, and then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't there, so I wasn't fully paying attention. I was. Because you were there. So, do you have anything planned for the rest of today? I don't. Like, if you don't mind, if I can, can I use your camp for a, for a couple hours? Most certainly. Aye. So, I'd like to go back to camp and kind of check in with Atalanta, just because I'm still feeling very vulnerable. and Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead and roll a religion check. I'm proficient. That's a 20, not that. 
All right. Um, you sit down for a while, uh, meditate kind of inside the camp, just uh, breathing in the salty sea air, um, the crowd kind of turning to a bit of white noise around you and the other camps that are here as people leave for the day to go about their business uh, in the markets and up in the other districts of town. Um, and you hear the uh, kind of the voice of Ad Atlanta say, uh, Dern, you call for me? I, my lady, I'm still needing a lot of guidance here. I trust you've been watching my actions the last 24 hours or so. Among other things, yes. Am I doing the right thing by helping out my friend here? Um, Dern, the right thing to do has a lot to do with who you've decided to believe. Now, the way I interpret what's going on, your friend may not have legal claim to the mine. Maybe the other fellow does. If you're talking about the law, I can't say you're doing right. If you're trying to help people, trying to do what's right for those people, then maybe you are. I can't say this is something I have anything at stake in, in terms of the mine and where it falls in terms of the balance of the greater things around it. Um, it's not a place I would be meddling in. I don't think you're necessarily doing my service here or the service of your temple. So I think it's on your conscience to decide which way you think is right. At least until you decide whether you're going back to your temple or going back into my own service. What would you have me do, my lady? I told you before, I'd have had you pick up your hammer and bring balance to what was to the chaos that was happening back on the island that you left, but you weren't ready for that. You'll need to take a while and think about what's most important to you, what you think is right, the rules of your temple, the requests of a goddess, the pull of your conscience, and decide what one of those paths is going to be the most important for you to follow or break. Your oath is one of conquest. Keep that in mind. If I could, I'd like to conquer in the name of good and balance and bringing that law to the people who might have their own laws that are corrupt or that harm others. Like my friend here, he might be going against the law or the letter of the law, but he's helping people. The law should be changed by force if necessary to accommodate him helping. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dern, if... If you start to understand that law is not always, doesn't always mean right, then that's a friction you're going to have with your temple. But not with me. And you kind of feel the connection with Ad Atlanta fade. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Where Dern, Dern gets one point of clarity. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with you during that time? Uh, I guess it's just 
walking around, taking a look at things, and trying to wait for to see if she'll show back up. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, just waiting around, sitting, <laughs> doing nothing. Hey, ghosty guy. Yes? Is there, no, is there another e- exit here? No. I'm afraid it's just the one. Bloody hell. Unless you're here in a week, or a few days, then the whole thing will be an exit. Help. <laughs> and that will be the last you see of me. Until then, just the one. Great for an audio podcast. I know, right? <laughs> I'm miming having binoculars. Fantasy binoculars. Fantasy binoculars. If you know this house so well, is there a way I can get out without being seen? Stealthily. Um. There's just the door and then the gate. And whatever is on the other side of it is on the other side of it. I have an idea. If I cast a spell of silent image of mm-hmm. the front door and then I knock, would I be able to transmit that with me? Bring the spell with you? Yes. No, the spell would be in this dimension. You'd cast it in this. This is a separate dimension. But I can move it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to bring it cross dimensionally. (laughs) Right. No. I'd assume I would know that by this point. Have would have known that by this point then. All right. I'll wait until dark and then I'll. Knock and poof. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we'll be back to you guys for a while. So Dern comes out from the camp and finds Worden again. And Thank you for the use of your camp. Anytime, I, brother. I feel a bit better. I should hope so. You were in there for a while. Aye. <laughs> Glad it takes time. So I haven't seen that owling yet. Uh, I don't know if she's coming back. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, either she is going to come out and we still can't get to Lucius, or we just wait to mo- till tomorrow for the auction. No, tomorrow is the bills. The day after is the auction. I'm getting really fucking lost here. <laughs> <laughs> the feast of the bills is tomorrow. Dern pulls out an that, abacus and starts just... <laughs> <laughs> the day after that is the auction. So what are we going to do for two days? Well, tomorrow we eat, I guess. Oh, man, yeah, that's true. A lot. You know. <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't know where to go from here. Away I from mean, the mansion. The, the multi-pronged approach just doesn't So Dern seem... closes his eyes. <laughs> he holds his hammer close and he just... Like, he's not trying to go full-on communion with Atalanta again, but he just wants to feel, like, led in a specific yeah, direction. you guys want some help. <laughs> yes. yes. Let, I'm praying to my god right now. You can roll a religion check? Or, I guess it, this would be more Roll a, a DM, please tell me what to do. Help me. Intelligence check. Uh, big Process money, no whammies. What you've had in town. <laughs> no <whammies>. Ten. <laughs> Stop, damn it. I have an average amount of whammies. <laughs> 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 Um, based on, on what you've seen in town so far, uh, there's some places you maybe haven't, haven't been yet that you might be able to get some more information from, but you don't, Dern's kind of lost in this place. He doesn't know a whole lot of what's going on. Maybe, maybe Worden could, you could roll a check too. Dern literally want. stands his war hammer on the end and let's go to see which way it falls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was an investigation, you say? Straight intelligence. Uh, just intelligence. Fifteen. Oh, that's that's better. Um, so you recall um, having some sales 
uh, in town before at the auction. Some of the things that go up for sale uh, are on display at the auction house, and you can inquire about them and ask uh, information. Uh, so there's potentially a, a way you could at least... You had caught a flash of uh, Lucius showing you some records that he was part owner of the mine. Mm-hmm. Um, something akin to that ownership or a deed would probably stand in for, you know, since people can't actually see the mine at the auction house. Um, so you might be able to see some of that paperwork and see why he has claim to it. That might be something you were curious about. You don't know if it would necessarily uh, necessarily help you. Um that would probably be about what you could pick up with that. So another thing I was thinking about while we were talking is uh, you said I brought uh, something here to have appraised. You what have was, before, what yeah. What was that, the, the big ticket item that you said earlier? Yeah, that's something you sold uh, quite a while ago, and you've kind of had to burn through some of that money paying Lucius. Um, Which, by the way, they don't know yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well... Oh, I, okay. I'm bad at this. <laughs> when okay. everybody's in different places, it's very hard. Um, but uh, it was an artifact that you had found. Uh, artifact. Uh, deep in the earth. It had something to do with, uh, you thought, um, some mind flayers. Uh, it was something that they had touched, and it had a little bit of, uh, their knowledge inside of it that they had gained from kind of the mines that they had eaten. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something you wanted to keep. Um, I was just wondering if it was something that may have had some arcana or that I could possibly go back to the appraiser to talk about the the spell that's causing the mansion, actually. Did it look like Clippy? No. <laughs> uh, it was kind of like an Clippy. orb, um, like a crystal ball almost. Um, Yeah, I mean, when you got it appraised, it was somebody who specialized in understanding arcane and mysterious type uh, items. Yeah, I was wondering if there was maybe some way we could talk to her or that person about the the spell that was creating the mansion. Sure, so this could be, uh, I know know a gal or whatever, so who's this this NPC? Probably somebody who lives in cliffside, like in the side of the cliff. That's where most of the appraisers are. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's do... What the fuck? It's an elf. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I guess she's a, specializes in Arcana, obviously, so she would know a lot about magic. Yeah. Uh, let's say her name... Arabella. Okay. Go ahead and roll a charisma check, because that's how kind of your relationship is right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get to add anything to that? It's a five. All right. So, um, uh, like your last uh, I know a person in town for yesterday's use of that, um, not on the best terms with uh, Arabella, when you sold her the uh, item, you weren't exactly that forthright in the origins that you knew a little bit of kind of where it had come from because you had actually fought like the outskirts of one of the nests of some of these mind flares. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you stopped and closed the mine off so that it wouldn't connect there anymore. Um, and she had asked you and you were like, I just found it in the ground. <laughs> um, and when she found out that it had that connection and she kind of, uh, probed a little bit into your mind. She has the ability to detect surface thoughts and knew you were kind of misleading her a little bit. So she, she let you in on the fact that she knew you were doing that. So there's a little bit of tension between the two of you. You're kind of an asshole. You know that, but you do know her, but it's a good cause. Hey, the the pal of the ends justifies the means. (laughs) All right. So you head up to, uh, to cliffside, go to meet, Arabella, um, she's got all these houses are Hobbit style houses built mm-hmm. into the side of the um, cliff. So it's a little interesting that the elf lives there. I'm with him right now, right? Mm-hmm. Now. Okay, good. Um, and you head in, you knock, and it's a kind of like the front room of her house is her shop. Like mm-hmm. she can let people that far into her house. 
um, where she just does the appraising. It's a very small room. She doesn't need a lot of tools there for that. Uh, and she's there, and she sees you and gives you kind of a shitty smile. <laughs> hey. Worden. What did you find this time? Oh, nothing. Was it the, I don't know, the brother of a beholder wrapped up in pretending to be a child's ball? No. Like the dreams of a beholder? No. No? No. Well, what is it? Well, actually, I just came here for a bit of information. Okay, well, that's what I traffic in, I suppose. And uh, was it down in uh, Hillside, or was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So so the mansion down in Hillside, have you yes. seen that? Yeah. Um, yes, we've all, we've all seen the mansion from up here. It's, it's quite a spectacle. So I need to know, is there a way we could get in there? Uh, um, well, I, I mean, I can charge you the going rate for my minimum is 15 minutes of my time, and then we can have our discussion. I think that's fair for acquaintances, she says. And how much? Um, that's 10 gold. Okay. All right. And I can tell you what I know about the mansion. Great. Right. That sound fair? Yes. Okay. Um... Well, uh, have a seat, uh, your friend. Uh, ha- have a seat. Uh, I'm Arabella. Nice to meet you, Arugula. <laughs> <laughs> and you are? My name is Darren Hammerstone. Okay, Harm Dermerstone. <laughs> um, Arugula. <laughs> ham. Ham. Areola. <laughs> <laughs> would you? We can do this all day. Would you like a seat? Hey, well, no, I she was, was asking if you wanted some ham. No, no. I thought he was never. Never mind. Um, I'll take some ham. I don't. Ha- I don't have ham. <laughs> Dern sits down and ironically pulls ham out of his bag. <laughs> Is it a sausage? Just chopping ham. Oh, not a sausage. Definitely not a sausage. Ham you picked up in the market to sure. refill your packs. Yeah, why not? He. Where did you get ham? Yes. <laughs> What in the city? Sorry, sorry. Back to you. Sorry. Um, this is on your time. So, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the mansion is not really there. It's uh, incorporeal. We, it's, we, we, we kind of figured that. It's an entrance. It's a portal. And it displays sort of the, the mansion as it would look if it did exist. You see? Uh, right. Uh, the inside of the mansion exists in its own plane of... Its own pocket dimension. It's like a very fancy bag of holding. It's a very powerful spell, in fact, um, that can only be cast by powerful wizards, uh, people with access to expensive scrolls from those powerful wizards, things of of that nature. Um, This particular mansion is uh, one that, uh, like all Actually, all of these types of mansions allow entrance for anyone the um, the owner would like to admit, um, and only they know how they can get through the door. Um, and anybody that they would not like to admit has no way of gaining entry other than uh, receiving an invitation uh, from the owner himself. Is there a way to cancel the spell? Um, hmm. Uh, a powerful use of a, a dispel magic, uh, perhaps, uh, could do it. Uh, but the the spell is very powerful. The, any use of, of dispel magic would need to be empowered by a similarly powerful um, wizard or uh, arcane type caster, most likely. Do you know anyone in the city who would... Meet those qualifications? I don't have anything like that. Um, I mean, if there were anybody who had that level of skill, it would be in in Clifftop. And, you know, their uh, services would be much more expensive than mine. It's much more powerful than anything I could cast. I've got a hammer. I don't know what to tell you here. I wasn't really looking at you. Oh, okay. I was just thinking the distance. What time of day is it? It's not. I mean, it was morning when you went oh. in. So, you hanging out all day? After a while, I get bored and probably 
think. <laughs> All right, you, you zip out around this time. Yeah. You want to be stealthy about it? Yeah. Roll a stealth check. You walk in or fly in? Walking. Okay. 12. All right. Um, not super stealthily, but the gate kind of creaks a little bit, even though it's not exactly real. And you get outside to <gasps> the uh, uh, market. Somebody sees you leave the gate who's just walking by, um, but doesn't seem to take much notice of you coming out. That's fine, so long as I don't see them. No, you don't. Okay. Do I see Kenku? Uh, make a perception check. Never more. <laughs> Ten. I'm putting that dice away. You don't see anybody familiar around. Good. Yeah, switch my d21s. <laughs> you headed out to look for them again, or not yet? Just laying low. Yeah. Okay. She so, finds a Panera for the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. You can get that from McDonald's now, though. I know, but it sucks at McDonald's. It's much better at Panera. <laughs> Panera's yes, got yummier food. Best is the library, though, to be honest. Yeah. Especially when they have their own computers there. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Rails? What are those? These are places you can listen to Date Night. Go to datenightpodcast.com on your favorite free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing the 15 minutes are up. Mm, do you have any other questions? Not particularly. What is your quest? <laughs> what is your favorite color? What is the what is what is it? Airspeed velocity airspeed of velocity of an unladen swallow. And we're back <laughs> outside of my expertise. I'm afraid. <laughs> no, I think we're good. Um, I don't know what else to ask. Um. Basically, we can't get in without an invitation, and we can't get rid of it without a powerful magician or magic. And that pretty much sums it up, I guess. <clears throat> so, I guess we go back down to the market area and start look, or the auction area. I guess we're going to go up to the auction area okay. and start looking to see if we can find any of those papers. And sure. I'm staying far away from that one inn. Yeah, gotcha. Not going back to the slum side of town too much. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, all right. You go up. You pass the uh, town hall again, where they're pretty well set up. It looks like now with the bells and um, you know bells. different booths and actually people there are starting to smoke some stuff. It seems like that they're getting prepared a little bit early. No, <laughs> they're smoking meats. Oh, <laughs> there's but. Just, it's a halfway it's village, so there's been plenty of, of <laughs> plenty of people smoking uh, pipes around, too. And then you pass, um, or you get over to where the auction house is, where you've been before. Mm-hmm. Um, and seemingly not a whole lot going on outside right now um, at the auction. There are some people, uh, look like they're moving carts in from the actual land side mm-hmm. of, of this instead of from the coast. Um, who are bringing some like into the back uh, side of the the auction house from where you are now? So, since I've been here before, do I know where they keep the items? Yeah. of auction. Um, there's two parts of the building that kind of come together and make an L. The larger part is like the warehouse where they bring all the stuff in, and the smaller parts like the office where you can um, go in and find somebody who will let you view stuff in the warehouse, take you through, and have like a preview, or um, show you some of the things in the office if you're looking for paperwork or looking to consign something or whatever. So then we're going to the office. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you go into the office, uh, and there's a little uh, halfling woman um, sitting across who you've uh, met here before when you've brought things in. And, um, okay. She's, uh, her name's Poppy. Um, and she says, Oh, a warden. You've come back with some more, have you? Oh, not this time, Poppy. I kind of came looking for something this time. Oh, you're going to be bidden. You want to make a? You want to register? Uh, well, not bidden so much. I just want to see if I want to bid, really. Oh, okay. You'd like to have a look at some of our wares? Is yes, it... uh, mostly the uh, larger items. The you know the paperwork side. Not, I'm not really looking for you know materials as much as I'm looking to make an investment. All right. Um, 
Well, we've uh, all the deeds for uh, every uh, property that we're selling uh, on display in the next room. You're welcome to peruse them. Uh, Perfect. Have anybody who's, you know, an expert in legal matters that you'd like to retain, I can make recommendations around town, help you interpret any of the documents. I'm not saying you can't, but if you're going to be dropping a lot of money... No, no, I understand. You know, um, if you do have any questions about anything, feel free to come back and talk with me. I believe we've uh, three properties uh, that we're selling in tomorrow's auction. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you go into the next room. Uh, there's nobody else in there. Small, dusty room with a lot of file cabinets. And Take things. it and run! <laughs> <laughs> um, and there are three tables with three big uh, scrolls like laid out on them with a bunch of information in it. Um one is uh, a deed to an actual parcel of just land that comes mm-hmm. with like a lake. It's a pretty big area. Um, it would be kind of a high profile um, estate mm-hmm. like that's being sold uh, for a lord who's passed away um, and his family has their own sort of family right. uh, or their own land and things. Um, then there's um, another one that's actually for a stake um, in a casino. Um, oh, you were looking for an actual steak, weren't you? When you said steak and paused, I got a little excited. Um, that's from the 10,000 cities. <laughs> and the last one's for the uh, the mine. Okay. That, that you're familiar so with. obviously you want to look at the one for the mine. Yeah. So you look through the, the paperwork for the mine, and you see... Um, uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check, I guess. Or... <laughs> oh God! Crit fail. Crit fail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, <damn it. laughs> he Just, somehow casts fireball. <laughs> yeah. You you look over it. Actually, it'd be sacred flame. You can't really make much out of what what this says, but you can see Lucius's name on it and Finnegan's name on it. Hey, can you read this? I forgot how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Can I read I this? know that word. <laughs> I mean, it's in, like, kind of legalese. You don't really understand what it says. I'm a lawbringer paladin. I might well, know something. Yeah, yeah, you might. Give it a shot. Sure. At eight. Oh, what kind of role is this? I guess it's more of, like, a history than anything else. Ah, uh, what is history? Not proficient. Seven. <laughs> um, you can see it looks like... It looks like old. Lucius. That's a little one. According to the document, in some way, Lucius had a stake or some shares of this mine is what it looks like the paper says. But aside from that, it's really hard to understand. From what I'm reading here, it sounds like Lucius wants to buy your mine and open up a steakhouse. (laughs) (laughs) I knew it. He's filed, he's definitely filed something related to steak here. <clears throat> so, uh, can I go back to Poppy and, uh, you know, is there someone who can, uh, interpret the, this scroll for us? Cause, uh, yes, sure. Um, we don't do it because there could be a conflict of interest. No, we don't no, want to mislead someone. Uh, but I have, uh, uh, plenty of names here for people who would look it over for you. Um, the one I would probably recommend for, uh, any property paperwork uh, would be Thadwick Lowcliff. Um, if you'd like him uh, to come by and, and look it over, I could send someone for him. Last name? Uh, Lowcliff. Um, or you might uh, go uh, into Cliffside and, and have a look for his shingle uh, out there and see if you might find him. I could potentially send for him if you'd like, see if I could locate him. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and send for them. I don't have anything else to do today. We don't have anything else to do for like 48 hours. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so she says it may be a little while. Feel free to uh, have a seat or, you know, go back outside and check in with us in uh, in an hour or so. See if we've had a chance to track him down. But so she. All right. She goes out. Um, Is there a place to get the bite around here? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Um. The Flying Hellhound. <laughs> <laughs> the Flying Hellhound has a uh, very... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, no it's someplace something, else. Uh, 
everything up here is a is a tad bit pricey i'll say up on uh, on clifftop but uh if you want to have a bite up here there are street vendors in in the uh the locals market is probably the best place to eat if you ask me all the way back down no no the locals uh oh you, okay so here. the ones that are coming from the land i got you mm-hmm. do you have some paper paper i and some ink i do you need just just a, a scrap or uh, maybe a couple of sheets mm, all, all right um a, lo- a medium-sized scroll for oh, someone a of interested of in bidding on something as uh, you know interesting as that, sure. Here, here's oh, some thank you. sheets, a quill, a little bit of ink. Thank you. Travel. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Um, good luck if you decide to bid. Thank you. I'll send I Thadwick. Oh, you fifty million. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send Thadwick. Um, you know, into the uh, room. Which property are you looking at? Oh, uh, we're looking can, at the mine. All right, he he could maybe get uh, started having a having a glance at it. Perfect. It would be great if you could get your hands on. I understand that's that's the mine you've been running for quite some time, right? Sure. All right. <laughs> um, I'll I'll send for him, and she talks to she pops into the warehouse for a second, and then comes back in and and sits down. You guys head out to the clifftop market that's the street meet. Get some street meats. Mm-hmm. And while some we're ham. eating, while we're eating, I want to take those those couple of sheets of paper and carefully tear them into fours. Okay, and then take the ink and like write out fake, like tracked pamphlets. <laughs> gotcha. Just in case we have a, a sticky situation, I have something to help with my deception. Sure. Roll a. a f- you have you heard the good word? <laughs> you don't have forgery tools, but these are just pamphlets. No, like so I don't need just to roll look a deception good. check. The cheapness kind of for, works in for my how favor. good the tracks are. Uh, you said deception? Yeah. That's uh, going to be a 10. Okay. So you've got a handful of those tracks. Have you tracks. heard the good news? Okay. By the Grab way, some street meats and head back. It's been about another hour. Is there anything Trixie's doing? Wandering around, I'm thinking if I roll a 5 or a lower, I end up running into that halfling. If I roll a 15 or above, I end up following them and anywhere in between... I can maybe be spotted by them or something. Okay. I don't know. Well, you're down unless you go up, you know, to the other district. Well, I'm avoiding the slum area. I roll a 14. Okay, so what does that mean? I was hey. What I just <laughs> said is that I ended up near them, but I hadn't found them. All right. Well, you're up then in the other topside market okay. to try and stay away from maybe running into that halfling down yes. below. Is that the same market that we're in? Mm-hmm. Can I roll perception check? Yep, you both can. That's a six. Ten. It's good meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too busy scrawling on my pamphlets, mm-hmm. just ham-fisted coloring like a four-year-old. What's that ham? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll roll to see if I see them. Okay. Perception? Mm-hmm. 21. They're they're eating meat. <laughs> they're very oh, they're nice coloring. And coloring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's like a toddler at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the kids menus. And they're eating meat. <laughs> Whew. Can I have some more macaroni and cheese? <laughs> so yeah, you do see them. Okay. Following them again? Yep. All right. <laughs> you see them after uh greasing up their beards with Street meat, getting in, uh, walking into That's the auction house. so manageable. And walk into the auction house. I saw them go in there. Mm-hmm. Did I see them walk back out after, or are they back in there now? No, they're back in there. This okay. is the second time. All right, you're back in the auction house, and there's a little half laying in the other room with you, uh, with the deed. Thadwick? Hi, I'm Thadwick Lotliff. Good to meet you. Hi, I'm Word and... Shieldbreaker, good to meet you. All right, I understand your you've interest in um, knowing what you might be purchasing here in yeah, terms well, of the mine. I, I I know what I'm purchasing. I just need to know what all that that the legalese means. Right, right. In, indeed, uh, a wise decision to understand um, what you know what those things may mean. Um, I could give you my services to look over the deed. It would take me maybe a few hours to really get a handle for it um it would uh, run probably 200 gold or so 
I'm tapped. Or, um, when he sees you do that, he says, Of course, for men of your nature, uh, 200 gold wouldn't mean much if you were interested in bidding on the mine, but uh, the way we trade down in Cliffside is is for favors. I'm sure the gold, uh, it was stupid of me to say well, anything. Well, 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 what kind of favors? I cast divine favor on him. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 not... No, I've done so it. So do I. Not, <laughs> not, not, no, 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 I've done it. <laughs> not, not that sort of favor. Regardless, you I'm have sure the buff now. I'm sure it's below men of, of your stature to even ask. I shouldn't have brought it up. But um, me wife, uh, Melindy, she's got it in her head that she's to be the best baker in all of Cliffshore. Baker or beggar? Baker. Oh, Baker. Okay. So a really low bar to be the best beggar. <laughs> she, well, you uh, know, you don't know. People but, have different aspirations. So tomorrow, is you understand, is the, the feast for bells. Correct. Yes, yes, we understand. Yeah. And at this feast, there's always a contest, a baking contest. And this year, it's lemon pies. I, I have eaten no less, mind you, than 364 Lemon pies in the past year. I'm guessing it's one day. One a day, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I can do math. Let me let me stop you there. Is your favor to have us eat? No, no, no. No, no. I believe his favor is to have her win. Yes, men of your stature, I would have placed on being able to help me with the, the eating. If we lose, maybe Just next year, I think you, did. you can her. help me eat. <laughs> But but I would hope that I don't have to go through this again, you understand? I, no, of course not. Now, me wife don't have to win. The fact is, she's been trying to beat the same damn woman for the past 15 years. And, and she you need her killed. Got it. <laughs> Got, wow! What? <laughs> the love for good paladin. And you need to have her killed, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. So here's what I'm thinking. It's if been... we eliminate the pie, we eliminate the problem. It's here's what I'm thinking. We need a multi-pronged attack. It's been a okay, year. So it's a multi-pronged of attack. Well, this was a year of lemons. Kill the baker. By a year of pecans. Eat the pie. By a year of pumpkins. By a year of apples. I'm... By a year of rhubarb. And I hate rhubarb. Darren's getting hungry. And I've heard. <laughs> I think we're that all getting next hungry. Year, Next year, of all things, is a rematch of rhubarb. You understand. And I can't do it again. So So kill the baker and eat the pie. 200 gold. Or make sure Mrs. Myrtle Sugarfinger doesn't take home the prize this year. Do we go steal a pie? How do we do this? Well, that's easy. We just eat it. Oh. We discard the evidence. Where see? does she live? Well, she lives in, in Clifftop. Oh, I, I, I meant like a specific address. Very wealthy. Um, she uh, lives uh, in, the, in the locals. Uh, she, uh, she lives in the, um, the tall uh, house beside the, the flying hellhound. Uh, it's very difficult to miss. Um, she, if you... Uh, if you take her pie, she's going to, to bake uh, another one. So I'm thinking... So we we'll wait until tomorrow, s- right before the contest, and can kill the pie. Yes, yeah, so... I mean, the life. I mean, the wife. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pie. Uh, if we have an arrangement, sounds like you're preferring the pie over the gold... Of course, I love pie. I mean, that's better than gold. Especially really. lemon pie. Because if you have gold, you use it to buy pie. Exactly. I imagine it's a pretty good pie. Cutting out the she middle. usually wins. Exactly. Um, it better there's be 200. no pie t- to be judged. All right, let's go. Hold on, hold on. If, if you're pie amenable pie. <laughs> to, this, uh, to this idea, on oh, yes. your, on the your pie word, I, I can start the, looking over the, the deed. But mind you... If 
Myrtle Sugarfinger wins the contest tomorrow, and I've given you the information about this deed. There's a year of pie eating in it for you both. Sounds like a plan. I'm waiting to it's, hear a downside. No, no. It's rhubarb. I, I, I don't mind the rhubarb. It's pie. It's free food. Well, either way, it seems like me problems are solved. Hey. So I'll start looking over these. Come back in a few hours. I'm sure I will have uh, digested this much more huh. quickly then. I see pie. what you did there. Uh, <laughs> pie. <yes. laughs> we hope you've enjoyed our date night together. Remember, you can really help us out by subscribing, rating, and reviewing on whatever platform you use to listen to us. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again in one week.